bom dia, boa tarde, boa noite, or whatever the case may be. My name is Marcus, and I am the host of the Black Brazil Today YouTube channel, as well as the BlackBrazilToday.com blog, where I analyze Brazil from the perspective of race. So here we are, uh, almost closing out a 2022. We got like a week left here. So it's actually Christmas Eve. Um, and so in reality, this marks like 23 years that I've actually been uh, following the situation of race in Brazil, because I've often uh, talked about when people ask me how I got into Brazil, and I always refer to the same date, December 24th, 1999. That's when I picked up this uh, encyclopedia. I'm going to tell you a little bit more as I get into today's piece. Well, I'm going to be talking about Kwanzaa, a festa of commemoration of our ancestry, our African civilizations that more and more Afro-Brazilians are celebrating. You know, I only came to understand that uh, there were black Brazilians who were you know, that were uh, celebrating aspects of, of the Kwanzaa holiday. Some, you know, I don't know, it must have been about six or seven years ago or so. And I just found it intriguing because, um, you know, a lot of things that come out of uh, the United States and the black community, those are things that, you know, a lot of black Brazilians, Afro Brazilians will have their eyes on. And if they think it's conducive to, uh, you know, starting up something that has that American influence in Brazil, then a lot of times they'll just they'll implement their own version of it there. Too many examples of this that I could talk about. But today I'm focusing on Kwanzaa. Because I just I just found it intriguing. There's like three or four states that I know of in Brazil that have communities or groups of people who like to celebrate Kwanzaa. So just wanted to talk a little bit about this today, tonight. As we move into a. Uh, uh, Christmas Day of 2022 and uh, start planning for the t coming 2023. So let's talk a little bit about this piece today. This is a cover story. Um, I think this is from, I don't know, 2019, maybe. This was the cover. And you find a lot of flyers like this in, uh, in the Facebook group for uh, what was called Kwanzaa Brazil. And I'm going to show a couple of these photos as I go on with this article. Um, what does this say? It says a uh, celebration, Kwanzaa celebration uh, with a musical presentation by a guy who calls himself Kunta Kinte. Yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure most of you know where that name comes from. So anyway, this is uh, a piece that I put together. And let me take a look at the date while I'm here. I think it's, uh, yeah, December 26, 2019. Um, so let me just go straight into this. Again, the topic is uh, Afro-Brazilians, more and more Afro-Brazilians celebrating the, uh, well, you know, the Festa of Kwanzaa. So thinking of this holiday season, I was already planning on posting something on this, the Christmas, winter, summer solstice, depending on where in the world you are. But then I read a comment by a longtime reader of this blog, which reminded me of something very important in my history of covering the question of race in Brazil. When people ask me how it is that I got into Brazil, I always respond with the same answer. On December 24th, December 24th basically Christmas Eve of 1999, I purchased a 2000 page encyclopedia called Africana about the African and African-American experience. That work was a treasure chest of history, culture, events, and personalities covering Africa, its people, and descendants. Although the book touches on literally hundreds of people, places, and things from around the world, for some reason, the numerous reports about Brazil, its people, and the importance of the African influence on that country caught my attention. From that day on, I began an intense journey that led me to visiting the country numerous times, eventually living there, reading numerous books, watching countless documentaries, and coming to know hundreds of people over the course of two decades. <laughs> Yesterday, December 24th, 2019, again, this article is from three years ago. It marked 20 years since I, quote unquote, discovered Brazil. And over the course of that period, I've learned many things about the country. Some of which I like, others others of which I don't like. But the experience, the experience itself has totally been worth the investment of my time. <laughs> I hope for those of you who have followed this blog for any period of time, this journey has, at, has been at least one-tenth of what it's been for me. 
My intrigue for Black Brazil is what leads me to share stories such as the one I present today. I delved into knowing Brazil 20 years ago on Christmas Eve. <laughs> so as I said before, uh, it's 2022. So it's actually been 23 years now, uh, Christmas Eve of uh, 1999, that I started getting into this fascination I have with uh, just, you know, the situation of Black Brazilians. And so it is that I present a report, not on Christmas, but a festival that has gained traction with persons of African descent for decades now called Kwanzaa. Of course, Brazil having been colonized by the Catholic Portuguese, the vast majority of more than 210 million people celebrate Natal, which is Portuguese for Christmas. But with a growing influence and knowledge of African-American history and culture among Afro-Brazilians, a small but growing number of people are participating in the celebration of the seven days of Kwanzaa from December 26th to January 1st. Sao Paulo's Gayasi Kwesi uh, Mfumi, his original name being Carlos Machado, has a master's degree in history from the University of Sao Paulo and has conducted research on the observance of Kwanzaa. <coughs> um, I happened to meet uh, Carlos Machado some years ago during my stay in Sao Paulo. You know, brother goes pretty deep. You know, he you know, he looks into a lot. I like, you know, for some for some time now, he I don't know if he still does this, but he was contributing articles to the uh, Hassa Brazil magazine. Again, I did a story on that. You know, it's Brazil's only magazine that's devoted or targeted at the Afro-Brazilian population. And he often does pieces on um, <clears throat> the scientific discoveries and inventions of Africans and their descendants throughout the world. You know, uh, Carlos gets pretty deep into our history, so I really appreciate his work. Um, he's somebody who's also, uh, you know, he educates a lot of people on what Kwanzaa is. You know, he, they there a lot of people express interest in understanding what Kwanzaa is, and he does a lot of presentations on uh, on this festival. So what he says, um, it's important to say that Christmas is Christmas, the birth of Jesus Christ, an important moment for Christianity. Kwanzaa is not Black Christmas. Kwanzaa is a harvest festival. It's not just one day like Christmas, says M. Fumi. The celebration of the festa began in the period between 1966 and 1967 in Los Angeles, California, during the historic struggle for the civil rights of Black people in the United States. Its creator, I know a lot of you might know this story, uh, Malana Karenga, sought a method to strengthen the unity of the global Black community. Is based on the Harvest Festival, which has long existed on the African continent. The event was inspired by the Zulu people's Umkosi Wama Festival and the Ashanti Harvest Festivals, but also by other African people who make the Harvest Festival, reveals uh, Giasi Kwezi Mfume. Uh, Mfume also reveals that he has observed Kwanzaa for 10 years, dating back to 2008 when people in the northwestern city of Salvador Bahia, or Black Rome, as you know, some people call it, first started partaking in the celebration. Kwanzaa's goal is that we can talk about ourselves apart from the Black movement meetings where we know that few people attend. Kwanzaa is a celebration, a space of commemoration of our ancestry of our African civilizations, knowing more, knowing more about us and being together in community, solving problems together, he explains. According to Karinga, the name Kwanzaa is taken from the Swahili language and phrase Matunda Ya Kwanzaa and means the first fruits. The choice to borrow a phrase from the Swahili is a unifying force in itself as with 150 million speakers of the language, it is the most widely spoken language on a con continent with more than 1 billion inhabitants. For celebration of seven days of Kwanzaa, a candle known as the Kinora is used that holds seven candles representing seven principles of Kwanzaa. The Kinara has three green candles on the right side, a black one in the middle, and three red candles on the left side. The red candle represents the struggle of African Americans who are represented by the black candle with the green candles representing hope for the future. The seven principles are Umoja, meaning unity, Kuji Chagalia, which means self-determination, Ujima, collective work and responsibility, Ujama, denoting cooperative economy, Nia, meaning purpose, Kumba, for creativity, 
and Imani representing faith. For each of the seven days, a different candle is lit on an altar in which various fruits and an ear of corn are placed. Each of the ears of corn represents the number of children in a family. With each day of Kwanzaa, family and friends get together around the table when someone lights a candle, starting with the black one. Other candles are then lit alternate, alternately from left to right. And as each candle is lit, someone makes a declaration about what a particular principle means from their own perspective. Then the focus of the gathering turns to ancestors who have passed on. A person chosen from the group then pours water or juice from a cup into a bowl. The chosen person takes a sip from the cup, raises it, and says the word harambi, meaning let's all pull together. With that, all present, all present, uh, repeat the word seven times with each person taking a drink, drink from the cup. The candles are then put out. On January 1st, during the big festival, there's a lot of food and each child receive, receives three gifts, often a book, some sort of symbolic item, and a toy. Subjects are spoken about our history while being a playful and entertaining space. Kwanzaa comes to reinforce Black identity, to be a space for our fellowship and appreciate, uh, be together and think like a community, uh, concludes Infumi. As more and more Black Brazilians are coming to accept the Black identity, it is understandable that such a festival would begin to catch on in Brazil. After years, decades, and centuries of Eurocentric indoctrination, people of African descent are beginning to question a racist manner in which peoples and cultures are placed in a, higher, uh, a racialized hierarchy. Uh, and Fumi is one of them. I don't celebrate Christmas because the 25th is my birthday, says Mfume, 48 at the time, with a laugh. Joking aside, this is, the historian reveals when he began to analyze the things he had been taught with a more critical eye. From the age of 17, I've questioned the Eurocentric legacy that Black people have violently been, been forced to accept. For Kwanzaa, Mfume regularly gather, gathers his friends and family seeing in the celebration a method of addressing cultural, economic, and political questions that affect the Afro-Brazilian community. In Brazil today, Kwanzaa celebrations have already been discovered in states such as Sao Paulo, Bahia, Rio Grande do Sul, and Santa Catarina. While it was not meant to be a substitute for Christmas, the celebration of Kwanzaa has spread to other areas of the Americas, such as Central America and Colombia. Although it is celebrated during the same season as Christmas, it was not Karenga's intent to rival Christmas. The, in, the inspiration coming from the festas of various African people, such as the Zulu and the Ashanti. Karenga didn't necessarily think of making a counterpoint to Christmas, but that happened also because he wanted the African-American community to think of the holiday season from the African civil, civil, civilizing value, says Thembi Seko who was responsible for the organizing of that first Kwanzaa celebration in Brazil and Salvador in 2007. This has to do with the idea of harvesting, plant all year round, and then you reap. It is a kind of balance about what happened. The party ends on the first day of the year with the hope of a better year, adds Enfume, who's, again, whose given name is Carlos Machado. For Enfume, Kwanzaa is a form of resistance of Black people that is similar to other cultural expressions already widely practiced in Brazil. It is an anti-hegemonic fighting strategy. Christmas is here and Kwanzaa is slowly coming. This always happens with Black resistance. It's never on the agenda, but it has always existed, always existed eating around the edges like the quilombo, capoeira, or candomblé, he points out. For Seco, it's necessary to redeem, to redeem the African values that he says were destroyed by European colon, uh, colonialism. It's essential to redeem what was lost, to be reborn in another model. It's not only a celebration, but also a possibility of inserting in the daily lives of Black people and their families, communities, the values that will end the Western precepts imposed on us. It may be true that the idea for the celebration of Kwanzaa started in the U.S., but what, with its emphasis on unity, it is crossing national borders with its potential for attracting other communities throughout the African diaspora that have experienced racism, 
exclusion and exploitation at the hands of Europeans and their descendants. Of course, this is a picture of Karenga. Many of you will be familiar with him. The message and uniting potential of uh, Kwanzaa seems to continue to attract new participants despite the controversial history of its creator, Maulana Karenga. Karenga, a longtime university professor, was accused of being an FBI informant and having been involved in the mem <coughs> having been involved in the murder of two members of the Black Panther Party in San Diego, California in 1969. Karenga has always maintained his innocence and claimed that he was, in fact, a victim of the U.S. government conspiracies. Whatever the case may be, in 1971, the Kwanzaa creator was arrested and charged with the rape and torture of two women that were part of his organization. Having been sentenced to serve 10 years in pr prison, uh, Karenga served three years before his release. So what do you think about this? Kwanzaa, Kwanzaa does have a following in the U.S., Brazil, Colombia, and Central America, where growing numbers of Black people see something positive in its celebration. But is the festa itself and what it represents uh, outweigh the controversial history of its creator? It's a question that many people tend to avoid when I ask this question. You know, I would just add that um, throughout history, uh, particularly of uh, African Americans, we find that a lot of people have been accused of being either sellouts or some type of informant for the U.S. government. Um, it's difficult to say, you know, with any uh, certainty who, who was, uh, you know, giving out information for the U.S. government and who wasn't. It's just, you know, it's one of those things where, you know, maybe we don't know for sure, but always when we're dealing with certain people, have to take, you know, look into those people with a grain of salt because we just never know. You know, this applies to a bunch of people that, you know, I've been familiar with over the years. So anyway, uh, regardless of how anybody might feel about the controversy surrounding the founder, the creator of the Kwanzaa Festival, um, you know, that's an argument that can go back and forth. I'm not really uh, fully swayed one side or the other about his, uh, his dealings, his history, you know, the accusations against him. But one thing can be said is that regardless of who started it, 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 it does have a following in other countries around the world. And who's to say, you know, how that's going to be over the next few decades. Uh, it's very possible that this, this festival could continue to grow uh, around the world where there are African descendants. So what I want to do right now is just show a couple of images of some of the Kwanzaa festivals that have happened in Brazil in recent years. There's been a number of them. And, um, you know, I've never been to one, but I've been reading about this for a number of years. And I just wanted to recognize that, you know, this is something that they're into. So I just wanted to show, you know, some of the, uh, some of the images from some of these gatherings. Uh, like I said, I think it's been going on Kwanzaa, Festi Kwanzaa festivals in Brazil have been going on for, I don't know, maybe a decade, maybe longer. I think it, according to this report that I just read, I think uh, the first ones really got started like in 2008 in the Northeast in Salvador Bahia, and then they kind of spread to other states. Uh, so I just wanted to uh, check out a couple of pictures, uh, some of the images, some of the flyers of some of, of these Kwanzaa events that they've been promoting for the last few years. So here's one image of uh, Hopendo racismo estrutura no, no Brasil, basically uh, like overcoming structural racism in Brazil. Uh, these are I'm, um, you know, some of the some of the guests who I guess spoke at this event. Then you have uh, the fourth encounter of Kwanzaa Brazil 2016. Uh, speaking about Ujama, the economic power of the black community. This is uh, with a guy named uh, Marco G. Preto. It's a guy I knew pretty well. He's probably one of my best friends in Sao Paulo all while I was there. I've been knowing him for maybe, wow. In reality, I've known him probably since I first started visiting Sao Paulo back in 2008 or nine, sometime, sometime in there. You know, this guy always has a, a <clears throat> you know, an ideal of trying to grow black economics in Brazil, particularly in Sao Paulo, you know, which is the economic engine of the country. This is the fifth encounter of Kwanzaa Brazil in 2016, just a flyer, just, uh, you know, promoting the event. Uh, here's another flyer for Kwanzaa Brazil. I think this is from actually from this year. I think this is from uh, 
December 3rd, which was on a Saturday, if not, with, according to what this flyer says here. You know, just more pictures. Um, obviously, we did, this is another uh, a gathering of people at a Kwanzaa event. It's probably in Sao Paulo. I'm not absolutely sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, another photo of uh, another Kwanzaa gathering. So then we have this uh, this flyer here. And that, what caught my eye here is that, uh, let me see. Yeah, this was in what, Santana, Sao Paulo. I guess the Santana region of Sao Paulo City. And I guess the theme of this particular Kwanzaa event was the uh, the uprising of the Mau Mau. You know, a lot of people are familiar with the history of the Mau Mau's. Okay, so then you have, um, you know, this was one of the flyers I presented in the beginning of this video, uh, Kwanzaa Celebration. And you see the group Iliaye had some kind of connection with it. So, you know, this is just saying Feliz Kwanzaa or Happy Kwanzaa. Here's another one for uh, Kwanzaa Brazil in 2019. I'm just checking out some of the uh, some of the themes that they were talking about at this particular event. Self-hate, the ed education as the antidote. You have black masculinities being a black man in Brazil. <clears throat> Seven principles to live in a common in in common unity. Black money from discourse to practice. You know, I guess this guy was a moderator. And uh, let's see here. Yeah, so this was in the Jabaquata region of Sao Paulo. So as you can see, there's there's been a number of Kwanzaa events. All of these flyers look like they're from the last I don't know five, six, or seven years or so. This is a uh, just a still image of a. Uh, the Kwanzaa Brazil group on Facebook, you know, feel free to go and check them out. Of course, all the conversations go down in Portuguese, but, you know, this is uh, how they promote their events for, for Kwanzaa in us, uh, probably in Sao Paulo. So anyway, with that said, I'm going to uh, close out this video here. I just wanted to give just a, an overview of, uh, you know, the happenings of Kwanzaa in, in some cities around Brazil. It's something that seems to be growing there. One of these days when I'm back in Brazil, hope I can I get a chance to be able to check out one of these events. So um, with that said, I'm going to end this video here. It is now officially Christmas morning. So um, hope you like this, this, uh, this video. You know, if you, you learned a little something about, you know, how Kwanzaa is taking off in Brazil, you know, I'm not saying it's, it's, you know, it's nowhere near going to be able to compete with Christmas anytime soon. I mean, it's not as big as Christmas, even in the United States, but it's just, you know, it's an intriguing uh it's, 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 it's intriguing to see that the black community down in Brazil saw value in this particular festival that they started having their own events there. So definitely, if you like this video, if you learned something, definitely, you know, give me a like. Consider sharing this video. Consider subscribing to the channel and also uh, push the the, uh, the notification button so that you uh, are one of the first people to get my videos as I upload them. So with that said, I'm going to end this video here and hope to see you all in the next video.